In this video, I want to talk about how we can actually undertake estimation of factor analysis models. And in particular, in this video, we're going to talk about how we can actually undertake maximum likelihood estimation of these types of models. So the idea is that we have an equation of a factor analysis model, which is written down here in sort of stacked equation form. So the idea here is that y represents the stacked values of the indicator variables. So for the case of having three indicator variables, it might represent the vector y1, y2, and y3. And I've stated before that implicitly when we write the equation in this form, kind of what we're assuming is that y1 represents an m by 1 vector because we've got n individuals, y2 is the same, and y3 is another. So that's kind of what motivated the matrix sort of way of writing down factor analysis models. But there's another way we can think about this sort of model, which is if we were to regard this 3 by 1 vector as being a given individual's levels of y1, y2, and y3. So in order to sort of write that down, what I'm actually going to include here is an index, and the index is going to be i, representing the ith individual. And it's going to appear on the indicator variables, the particular factor scores, as well as the idiosyncratic error epsilon. So just to be clear now, this represents the equation for a given individual i. And what we assume in factor analysis is that this indicator variable, yi here, is normally distributed with a mean of 0 and a variance which is given by sigma. Because we assume that these individual yi are multinormal distributed, that allows us to come up with a value of the likelihood. So the likelihood for an individual i, which I'm going to write as L of yi, and given that we also have a matrix sigma, is just given by the multinormal probability distribution, which is just 2 pi to the power minus p over 2, where p in this example here indicates the number of indicator variables which we have, the number of observed variables. And it's that times the determinant of sigma all to the power minus a half times the exponent of we're going to have minus a half times y i all primed or in other words the transpose of y times the inverse of sigma times y i and that's just the multinormal probability distribution assuming that the individual y i are normally distributed so you can just look this up in any sort of statistics textbook and you can find it there and the idea is that this represents the individual likelihood. What we'd really like is the likelihood for all n individuals. So the idea here is that what we would like is a likelihood as a function of y1, y2, all the way through to yn. And given that we actually have the variance covariance matrix of the indicator variables, which I'm going to write here as sigma. And if we assume that we have a random sample of observations from those n individuals, then we can assume that they're independent. And if the observations are independent, then to get the overall likelihood for the entire sample, all we need to do is take the product of the individual likelihoods. So if we do that, we find that this is equal to 2 pi to the power minus n p over 2 times the determinant of sigma to the power minus n over 2. And then finally, we just get the exponent of, now we're going to have a sum from i equals 1 to n of minus a half times yi, all, all transposed, times the inverse of sigma times yi, and then if I just sort of close off the exponent like that. So this represents the likelihood for all n individuals. And what we'd like to do is we would like to maximize this likelihood over choice of sigma, because that's the thing which is unknown here. But in maximum likelihood, what we often prefer to do is to maximize the log of the likelihood because the log has nice properties and it's a monotonic transformation, which means that if we maximize log likelihood, we've also maximized likelihood. So what we're going to first do is we're going to take the log of the likelihood. And if we do that, we find that this is equal to minus n p over 2 times the log of 2 pi, where I'm using log here to denote the natural log. And then we're going to have minus n over 2 times the log of the determinant of sigma. And then what we're going to have is when we take the log of an exponent, it sort of just gets rid of the exponent. So then we finally get minus a half times the sum 
from i equals 1 to n of yi, all transposed, times the inverse of sigma, times yi. So that's the log likelihood, and it's this expression which we're going to work on in the next video.